band uh, zijn ook uh, uh, momenten, situaties uh, de, dat ik ook anders kan coachen. Hè, dat ik mijn team ook anders kan neerzetten. Afhankelijk van de wedstrijd tegenstander. Precies. Hè, en, uh, zeker past bij het DNA van Ajax. Hè, dus bij een andere club zou dat ook anders kunnen. Maar uh, ook Ajax moet zich soms um, ja, ook andere strategieën eigen maken om heel succesvol te zijn. En, uh... Eric Ten Hag. I'm excited, you're excited, and I've been looking forward to doing this video. I've been looking forward to doing a bit of a deep dive into the tactics of Eric Ten Hag and how he can apply them at Manchester United. We've talked a lot about everything, really, Ten Hag and what's going on with Ragnik. But now let's take 10, 15 minutes, take some time out to try and learn a bit of how Manchester United will play under Eric Ten Hag. I hope you learned something from this video. We're going to take a look at his time, 2018-19, also in 2021-22, the foundations, the principles, the style, the structure... How does it fit in a Manchester United? Where will the strengths and weaknesses be? Where do we really need to make signings? That's what I'm going to try and run through it and explain it in this video for you. So make sure you drop a like on the video and make sure you go down to the bottom. You subscribe to United People's TV if you're new in town. Make sure you hit the notification bell as well. You get a ping every time I go live with a video like this one. But let's talk about it. Let's run into it. Run into it? Probably not the best thing to do. But look. I'm using a couple of threads here uh, that I've left uh, links in the description. Excellent research. I think some are Jamie and JP Salford. Plus, I've taken a look at plenty of other research as well. But big up to those guys for the visuals that I do use in this. And I've also spoken to uh, Jamie as well before. Um, look, the 4-3-3 formation. You'll know by now that this is the Ten Hag style. Two pivot midfielders, one number 10, two wingers, one striker, and quite a traditional back four in sense. If we were to take a look at that on the tactics board... This is how it looked in 2020. 20, uh, this is how it looks now in 2021, 22 with Graven Birch and Alvarez. Let's go full screen there so you can see it a bit more. Timber, of course, who we know well. Hopefully, we'll know more next year. And if we take a look back to when they got to the Champions League semi final, it was De Ligt alongside Blind. Obviously, Frank de Jong, Van der Beek, Tadic in the more central role. Now he's obviously moved out to the left hand side with the players coming and going. But the foundations and the structure have stayed the exact same for Ajax under Eric Ten Hag. It is that style of play. Now, the biggest difference I think we're going to see at Manchester United straight away is the build-up. The play from the back is going to be a fundamental difference. As you can see in this visual here, it's all about the back two dropping quite deep and having, a, having an ability to have ball-playing centre-backs is going to be so crucial to Manchester United adopting to the Eric Ten Hag system and style because it really is, I would say, it's a fundamental weakness of Manchester United's build-up play, but it's absolutely crucial for Eric Ten Hag. And I'm going to take it, I'm going to go to the tactics board in a bit. We're going to run through it in a bit more detail because not only is it about the two centre-backs, the full-backs really are crucial. Daily Blind and Masraoui. Uh, it was Tagliafico back in 2018-19 and Blind moved to the left-back position when De Ligt left. Uh, look, Blind, the reason that Ajax love Blind is these sorts of passes, the vertical passes. That means the passes that aren't simply just going left to right and keeping in possession, but the sort of line, passes that can break through defensive lines, that can bring the ball further up the pitch. Because if you look at how Ajax play, they love playing in triangles and this is a sort of cliche. This is, this, this is just a well-drilled team. Because one thing that Manchester United have definitely got wrong, we've always found ourselves with, not, with a, our team not having too many options. There's only like one or two to pass to, maybe because no one really makes movement. It's natural. It's really imprinted inside the Ajax system. But going back to what I was saying here about fullbacks being critical, fullbacks being crucial, it's because of this. So when you look at that there, that's Ajax in the build-up. It's 2-3-5, which might sound outrageous. It might seem outrageous to you. But if we were to take a look at how that could be applied to Manchester United, that effectively means that Manchester United are building the ball forward here. And we've got our fullbacks up the pitch. But typically what you see is one of the midfielders drop a little bit. Now, that would have been De Jong back in the day. That would be uh, Graven Birch now at Ajax. The deeper lying playmaker is somebody who comes alongside and helps the back two. The two centre backs kind of stay static in that position. But what, while we can look at this as the the overall fundamental style, it's basically like if you're looking at the starting eleven and, and kickoff, that's going to be the positions that these Manchester United players are playing in. 
But this is where you're going to see big weaknesses inside this United team because everybody has to be a bit fluid. You're going to have to see, typically what you see is when one fullback drops, they kind of switch more across to a back three like this. So that would be Daily Blind. Daily Blind would be dropping there, receiving the ball, and then you would get players dropping in, dropping into space, dropping deep, and he was he'd be trying to find those vertical passes here. So if we're looking at the player that needs to do this at Manchester United, is that going to be Luke Shaw? Is Luke Shaw really going to be? Luke Shaw's decent. I know Luke Shaw's had a bad season, right? But he was fantastic the year before. I'm kind of hoping that he can refine that sort of form. I'm not, I'm not sold on it. I'll be completely honest. But typically what you see from Ajax is one fullback holds deep and one fullback bursts forward. Now, I know that I've just shown you there that 2-3-5 formation, the idea that you've got a fullback there and you've got Van der Beek, who's a number 10, but you can see Veltman's over there on the right-hand side. And you've got your two centre-backs, the two midfielders, one fullback, and everybody squeezes into the overload. And I will, I will explain the sort of uh, more attacking part of the Ajax style, but it's a... It's the build-up which is where United are really going to have the biggest problems, I think. Because we're just not used to playing like that. I've got two balls on the pitch. Ref's calling it off. But we're just, we're just not used to playing like that. If we're looking at fundamental weaknesses that we've got inside this squad for how, how Ten Hag will want to play, right? It's this. We've got our two centre-backs. I know that the centre-backs are a problem. We probably need Timber coming in there. Someone like Timber. An actual ball-playing press resistant center back who's not scared to have a little bit of pressure and actually soak it up and then create a little bit more space so someone like Delo can drop into a bit more space uh sort of decoy runs up here allowing Delo to drop deeper everybody has to be there's got to be such versatility from this squad now that it, they just don't currently have they really don't and i do fear about our fullbacks i'll be completely honest i think Delo and i think sure whether it's Shaw, Tellez, I think he's got to be sold. I think he's proven that he's not good enough for Manchester United. Juan Bissaka, I think he's going to have to be sold. I think he's proven he's not good enough for Manchester United. And neither of those will really suit this system that Ten Hag's going to be implementing. Really, really won't because it's all about having one high fullback. One, one, one will typically hold back. It depends how aggressive you're going, what's happening in the pit. Sometimes you can get both up there and United playing with an extremely high line like this because that happens at Ajax. If, they, if, they, if they're chasing the game, and again, this is a big reason why I just do not think that Harry Maguire can thrive in this system. If, if Manchester United were chasing the game under Eric Ten Hag, you were typically going to see the wingers holding their width. Look how small that pitch is now. And look at this huge space in behind. Manchester United would not be able to play that system, really, if Harry Maguire was there, would we? We, ju we just would not be able to do it. But in terms of playing out from the back, it's you know what it is with you know what it is with the Ajax style of play. They will look for those passes. They will look for the movement from the fullbacks. They will look for vertical passes through the lines. And United just aren't good enough at that. He's done it in 2018-19 with this team, and he's done it. No, that's that, that's this team 21-22, and this team here in 2018-19. United have got to get so much better than that, and I don't personally think that we can we can we are capable of doing that with the current personnel that we have. But moving on from defense and, and, and the issues I think that we might, that Ten Hag will have there initially in getting that, it's because it's, it's, it's been our biggest weakness for like, maybe not biggest weakness, but biggest build-up weakness has been playing out from the back. We always play quickly through the transitions. Typically, our best football under Ole Gunnar Solskjaer was when we just burst from defense to attack. We won't really do that under Ten Hag as much. It will be patient and it will be possession-based. And if you're looking here, this is what will happen really when Manchester United will try and break it through the lines. You'll see Hallers dropping deep there. You've got Anthony on the right-hand side. It's about people creating space with movement. That's the fundamental, creating space with movement. No one's playing static football, which again, you're looking at United's weakness going forward. That's been a huge weakness. And you can see that that movement there all of a sudden creates four passing lanes that can be used if needed. And it means that that, that person, while but look, he's surrounded by four players, he's got four outs. He's got five outs if he wants to go backwards. Options are there. And that's that's the fundamental here. And that's what, that, when I was reiterating about the idea that, that this is the formation that you might see, but United are going to have to move so much under Ten Hag. It won't just be players sat in their own positions. The fullbacks will look like centre-backs sometimes. The centre-backs might drift into midfield to create some more space. 
Everybody's got to be so comfortable in, in what they know each other is doing that they can drift out of space and drift into other positions to free some space up. Because if we're too, we won't play rigid to that formation, if you know what I mean. And going forward here, you're talking about how, look at the options that we get here and you can see how wide the two wire players are. That is a massive fundamental of Eric Ten Hag as well. You can see that, is that Anthony on the right-hand side there? Uh, excellent visualizations here by JP Salford. And this is uh, another example of uh, Donny van der Beek dropping into the, the half spaces. You know, that's the sort of thing that gets associated when you talk about uh, Pep Guardiola. What is a half space? The half space is what happens when, say, Manchester United are going forward here. And we've got Sancho, we've got Sancho and Ilanga there holding their width, right? And then if you get uh, if you get Shaw coming forward, actually, no, Shaw can just stay back here. You've got Delo coming forward and you've got Bruno. By doing this, by moving over there, I should probably have had some uh, opposition defenders. Let's have some oppos opposition defenders down here. Let's just have a typical 4-4-2. That'll probably make it easier to visualize. I probably should have done that start, but it doesn't matter. I can do it during. We can multitask. So by doing this, by having Elanga out on the wing, for example, it means that that defender is going to have to go out and mark him, have to cover the space because the overlap is just too easy. Therefore, it's going to create half a space, whether that's Delo doing an underlapping run there, whether that's Bruno running into the space. It drags the whole team out of shape. And look, all of a sudden, Ronaldo's got space. If Ronaldo hasn't got space, it creates space there for some. It's all about space creation and movement. That's that's the fundamental. That's the, if you if you remember that, you really kind of understand quite a lot of what Ten Hag is going to try and do to this Manchester United team. I mean, unfortunately, the reality is, is that these players have really shown they're goddamn lazy and they haven't really been able to do it. But Ilanga and Sancho will hold some real width. It's why someone like Anthony sounds and looks like an exciting signing, as far as I'm concerned, because the idea that we could have him out on the wing, uh, was it over here? No, that's the wrong one. Over here, just holding that width. Look how much space he's doing there. It forces that defender to go, hmm, I can't just ignore him, can I? No. And if you look here, you've got one player there, two, uh, two within space, three if he wants to go backwards. It's all about the team as a collective playing together. Whether it's this team here and what they've done there, Gravenberch dropping deeper, Alvarez being the more defensive-minded midfielder, whether it's De Jong and Schoener and Van der Beek in that 2018-2019 team, that's the fundamentals that we have to see applied to this team here. If I'm looking at key weaknesses, I'm looking at the fullbacks, I'm looking at the ball playing centre back, and I'm looking at that midfield there. I think that United going forward, we need an alternative to Ronaldo. Yes, we do. We need to find that. But in terms of the actual Ten Hag philosophy and the structures he builds his teams on, this is where we're lacking. I don't know whether we're going to sign a fullback. I think we might be looking more towards the likes of Ethan Lair coming through, Brandon Williams coming back on from loan, um, Alvaro Fernandez coming through, example, for as well as well. I think we need to sign a centre-back and I think we need one, if not two, central midfielders. Otherwise, this whole build-up play, the whole Ten Hag system will fall flat on its face straight away. That's going to be the hardest thing that he has to get to get used to immediately at Manchester United. And then going forward, it's all about the overloads. It's all about the space movement from the team creating opportunities and players having the, A, the confidence and B, the actual ability to find these sorts of passes because it's all good and well drawing us down on a graphic. But if you haven't got a player who can play that pass, it's annoying. Bob would have been great at that. Bob is leaving. Shame. Uh, and it's about those overloads, staying wide, creating space, creating space through movement. That's the one takeaway you've got to take away from this video. You can talk about the 4-2-3-1. You can talk about everything. But it's that creation of space through everybody fluidly moving and moving together. And that's why it's going to be difficult because it's not easy. It's not an easy style of play. It is if everybody does it together and they know what they're doing, but it won't come straight away. In the same way, it didn't come straight away for Jurgen Klopp at Liverpool. It won't happen immediately for, for Ten Hag, but I'll tell you what, I'm excited to see what they can do. I'm worried about the weaknesses that we've got. I think if we have a good summer, we can definitely address that, that, and having an alternative. 
They're the three key areas I would say we've got major weaknesses. I know that we could probably do with a right winger, but let's hope that Rashford improves next year. Let's see what comes with Diallo and, and Pellistri coming through. Ilanga's shown great promise. Let's hope he can build on that. Fullbacks, I'm very concerned about. I think fullbacks are such a crucial part of Ten Hag's style in Masraoui and Blind or Tagliafico that he doesn't currently have. Shaw's going to have to find his feet again. We're going to need to do something at right back. The low, I don't think is... The low's got the biggest chance, but I have still hold my reservations on him. And in the whole of the midfield, Fred and McTominay, you haven't really got one player there who can drop deep and be that playmaker from deep. You haven't really got the left back who can do that, like Blind can do that, or De Jong or Gravenberch could do that there. You need that player. You also need the ball winner. Fred could technically be that ball winner, but I still think we could probably upgrade on Fred to make him a squad player. Lindelof, decent enough. I think did Lindelof can play in that uh, ball-playing centre-back role. I'm not ruling him out completely. I think he's got more of a chance than Maguire does. But again, Timber, I would back Timber to make such a substantial difference today. But look, it's exciting, man. I can't wait to see how this system works at United. It's clear that it's not going to come straight away. It's clear that Ten Hag is a man who's really principled in his foundations. And as I said, the main takeaway you've got to think here is the creation of space through movement. That's the, that's, the, that's the core focus that these players have to learn. It's not just about staying in your position. If you're a centre midfield, that's it. It's the only place you can be. But it's also having the discipline to know when to move out of it and when to move into it. It's about smart play. It's about football IQ. These players have to really up, the, up their levels because if they don't have that football IQ, they can't play this system. It's as simple as that. It's not a straight 4-4-2. It's far more fluid than that. In and out of possession. But you can let me know what you think about Ten Hag style in the comments below. Hopefully... Uh, you enjoyed this video. I've been waiting to do this video for a long time. I might do some more. I don't know what. I've, I'm just I'm just excited about Ten Hag, man. I could talk about him all day. But you can let me know what you think about it in the comments below, as you always do. Make sure you subscribe to United People TV, and I'll see you soon.